Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Doctors of Running podcast, where we, a group of doctors of physical therapy, discuss the art and science of running and the stuff that we're putting on our feet. Today at the round table, we have Dr. Matthew Klein, Dr. David Salas, and myself, Nathan Brown. We are excited to be with you all today. We're having a throwback episode today where we are going to be reviewing two shoes that we've been testing that people have been asking us a lot of questions about, and they are both marathon racing shoes designed for um, maximizing your performance and so we'll see how things how things shake out as we talk about these two pretty different shoes in terms of how they feel and then we're going to talk as well about what it means to choose a running shoe and why you might want to choose one versus another depending on your goals and the type of runner you are and that's kind of what will ground this so for our subjective for the day if you were going to go out and run a half marathon or run a marathon today and you wanted to pick the shoe that you felt most confident in that would allow you to perform at your body's best, what would that shoe be? So let us know in the comments below um, if you're on YouTube or you can find us on YouTube, subscribe, and then, you know, do that thing there. If you're on podcast, I do think that there's a way that we have people interacting through Spotify if you're listening there. So anyway, that's our subjective for the day, but we're going to jump right in and we're going to start reviewing the first shoe. Um, this is a shoe that has just launched. It is available to the public. Um, and that is the Hoka Rocket X2. It's been a number of years since their first Rocket X came out and they are you know, these two shoes couldn't be more different <laughs> from each other, the original Rocket X and the Rocket X2. So David, um, David did a review of this and comparing it, a short review comparison between this and the Vaporfly. He also had some errors in there, which he went in and corrected. Come on, DJ. Uh, but tell us a little bit about the specs for this shoe. Um, get it right this time. Come on. I'm just teasing. And then, um, and then just let us know kind of specs and what's going on and what's, what makes up this shoe. I will say for the record, I'm usually really good about not making those kinds of mistakes, and I am sorry to the fan base. We're gonna, we're gonna roast David tonight. It's fine. I'm like, I'm usually the one that's like, I know the embargo dates, I know the specs, everything. It's like in here all the time, and I, I yeah, screwed that is. one up. So, oh man, that sucks. But there's a first for everything. Um, uh, so specs, yeah, 36 in the heel, 31 in the forefoot, not 40. Um, but yeah, Hoka Rocket X2, dual, you know, layer Piba base midsole, dual density, so a little bit firmer in the bottom, softer in the heel, or softer above. And it's meant to contend with the other super shoes in the market, and I feel like it does. I mean, there's, I made the video earlier today with the Vaporfly comparison, but I feel like it does compare to a lot of the other shoes, and like, for the old listeners of this podcast, we used to do this whole thing of like, oh, this shoe is a baby between this and this, or like this is a comparison between that and that. For me, it's like what I almost wanted the A6 Metaspeed Edge Plus to be. It has this very similar forefoot feeling, but it has a smoother heel to midfoot transition. And some of that also corresponds with the Vaporfly, where like it's kind of like that baby between those two where the Vaporfly I felt was always a little clunky in the heel for me personally. And maybe it was a drop. I don't know. Like, however I was landing, I just felt like I was slapping that ground a little hard. And this one is beveled a little bit more. Um, if I pull it up to the screen here for the viewers, for the listeners, you can see this thing is rounded pretty good over at the heel. And when you look at the forefoot, it's very gradual, but it starts, it starts early. And so it feels pretty sharp, similar to the Vaporfly, but the Vaporfly is much further forward than it is in the Rocket X2. So the transitions you get are very rhythmic and it does make you feel, at least when you're up pace, I will say like when you're turning over and you're running a pace that you're actually gonna be racing at, this shoe feels really nice. At slower paces, you don't really get that as much and we'll go into that more later, but. Yeah, this yeah, is a shoe that we got. Yeah, it definitely falls into rhythm when you're turning over. And I feel like that transition's a little bit smoother in this, for me personally, than the Vaporfly. And just very quick, just rundown, a little bit wider base, more outsole coverage. It's a little bit heavier, um, but it's not that much heavier. My 9.5 was like 7.8 ounces, so it's still in that 7-ounce club when you hit that 9, men's size 9. So, yeah. I was, I was going to say, I think something of note, 
Hoka this year has changed their um, kind of their main last size, the one that they do all of their product testing with and kind of sending out to people with men's size 10 and most companies do men's size 9. And so they're listing all of their tech sheet um, kind of sizes based on men's 10. So if you're seeing reviews um, about this shoe, just know that their tech sheet from Hoka is listing shoe, uh, shoe weight and everything based on men's size 10 um, and not men's size 9, which is what is pretty much ubiquitous across the rest of the companies. Um, so just something to keep in mind. But let's talk a little bit about fit. So um, this upper is kind of a synthetic mesh upper. Tell me about, Matt, why don't you start us off? Like, tell us about how it fit, some of the other construction of the upper, what you thought of it. Yeah, super thin mesh material throughout with just appropriate place, placements of structure where it's needed, especially midfoot, teeny bit in the forefoot. No major heel counter. So those people that are sensitive to this, like myself, it was totally fine. Fit, it feels like it has just enough room. When I first put it on, I was like, is this going to fit short? So the other thing I'll have to say, slide off topic, this shoe takes a little bit to break in. I don't know if you two have had that same experience. When I first had it, it felt a little short, felt overly like stiffer than I would expect, and everything's kind of breaking in now where I've got just enough room in the, in the forefoot. It seems locked down. I haven't had too much issues with heel slippage. But yeah, initially feels slightly short, then breaks in to feel just right, just true to size. Not well, the narrowest thing, which is nice, but right. not overly wide. It's right, kind of right in the middle. Full disclaimer for me, <laughs> we kind of decided we were going to throw this shoe into the review. We had a different plan for the podcast, and I hadn't ran in it yet. So I, like, I'm a little bit sweaty right now, and that's because I just ran my first two miles in this shoe just now. <laughs> so pl please take my, my thoughts as an initial impression and not a final review. Um, but I did take it through you know, past my 5k pace in those two miles, I kind of just kind of zoned up and down. Anyway, um, in terms of fit, I loved the initial lockdown. I felt like I could cinch it down. Nothing was moving from the heel. This upper, the synthetic mesh is very akin to like the Puma Deviate Nitro Elite, where it's that kind of like plasticky type material that you can see through. It's a darker, you know, this colorway is a little bit darker, but you could still see your socks through it. Like it's a thin synthetic upper. Yeah. And yeah, I actually like, feel you like you can see through it, by the way. So yes. yeah, yeah, you totally can. And I just felt like, I don't know, I, I actually felt, Matt, that I had a good amount of room in the toe box. I didn't mm -hmm. feel like I was getting const like constricted no, yeah. as much as I do in some other Hoka shoes. I think part of that is because the sidewalls aren't as pronounced as they do in their other Sense. you know, yeah. training models. So yeah. I actually really liked the amount of volume. And there's just enough padding in the tongue where you can cinch down these flat laces. And I didn't have any irritation, obviously, again, in my two miles and no slippage in my heel. Um, so in terms of fit, I was really pleased in my men's size nine. Um, so that's kind of where I was at. Yeah, man. T tongue is gusseted which is nice, especially when you start getting an upper this thin, that is yeah. sometimes not done, but this was done well. And I think that adds to the, the, the good lockdown without overdoing it, which was great. So good job on that. David, do you have any additional thoughts on fit for you? Yeah, I think compared to a lot of the other shoes on the market, this shoe has a tiny bit more volume and it has a tiny bit more width. And so from the fit perspective, when you put the shoe on, it almost fits kind of like a trainer if that makes sense like like a like a performance trainer or like i don't know like it doesn't feel like a track spike or a racing shoe immediately when you like go and lace it down before you stand on it and run on it and everything but like just the pure fit it is relatively i mean for a racing shoe it's pretty wide for the midfoot and the forefoot the heel is still a little bit snug it, it holds and it has that little suede backing back here it kind of mm -hmm. creates a little bit of a hold as well to prevent some of that heel slippage but I, I actually really liked the fit of this shoe. It was one of those shoes that you put on, you lace it down, it, and the tongue has just enough protection as well. It didn't feel like it was biting at all either. So it was just like you put it on, and it's like it just feels comfortable, yep. you know, before outside of ride, geometry, performance, all that. But it's just a nice fitting upper. It's very thin, like you said. It's a translucent mesh. It's very plasticky, kind of like the vapor weave of Vaporfly Next Percent 1. Um, yep. that's kind of what it reminds me of for Puma Deviate Nitro Elite, very similar uppers. Um, but no, I think you guys hit it like that. Definitely. Yeah. Ring. I, I was really pleased with how it fit on this first little take for me. Um, let's start talking you, David, you mentioned a few things about kind of the ride and performance and kind of where you'd use this, but Matt, we'll start with you then. Ta talk a little bit about 
What's the foam feel like underneath? This is the first time Hoke has actually used a Piva base foam in a shoe that they've put onto the market. Um, what, how, how would you compare this foam feel? How would you describe it? That kind of thing. So I have to say it, it has changed. So when I first put it on, I was like, okay, I can, in the heel especially, it's like, I know this is a Piva foam. I get it. It was pretty firm overall, especially up in the forefoot. And it felt almost like the thing that made me think of original, uh, immediately was the original Audios Pro where it just kind of felt like that bulbous forefoot you had to get over. So it was really easy to get up on your toes, but landing further back, that's where I got a bounce, but it felt like I was like a negative drop shoe almost. That has now gone away, but mostly. It does still feel like a very aggressive ride, but as the foam is broken in, there's a good amount more bounce. It's, on, it's a firmer bounce. It's not a mushy, you know, super soft thing like a RC or SC Elite from New Balance. It's more of a firm, snappy bounce underfoot that's continued to break in really, really nicely, but it just takes some time. Like I did a tempo run this morning and it felt much better and it honestly felt a lot better running way faster. I think somebody mentioned this a second ago that running easy in this shoe, it's kind of, it's like you can do it. It feels a little awkward, but then when you pick the pace up, it's like, oh, this is what this is designed for. So it has a couple different personalities and I'm going to encourage people that this seat needs to be used the right way. This is definitely a tool. But yeah, foam feel, it's definitely Piba. It's a little bit firmer, but you're still going to get that classic Piba bounce. It's just got a little bit different flavor, I think. Yeah, what's your take, David? Same or different? I agree. I mean, it's definitely a, dif a different flavor. And for those <laughs> that have followed this podcast for a while, I think you'll know that one of the shoes that I talk about every once in a while that no one on the planet talks about is the Exep 160X 3.0. No, oh, not the Taroko, though I did like the Taroko, but that was <laughs> the Exep 160X 3.0. Like, that's also a PIBA based shoe, and it does have a bounce, but it, for whatever reason, it just has a little bit more give to it, and it doesn't feel quite as poppy as, like, say, Zoom X. And that's what I get from the Rocket X2. And that's not a bad thing. It's still bouncy. It's still a Pipa based shoe, but it just like this shoe from a transition standpoint and how you come off the forefoot, it definitely responds more when you push off of it and you try to run fast. And I, it's a shoe I've had no issues running on the track with as well. And I think part of that is also the stability and how well they've done the platform itself and how grounded you actually feel for how much foam there is. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's kind of funny from a ride standpoint, like the foam that I could probably compare it closest to. And I don't know what they call that foam because we don't run in that many X-Type shoes, but is uh, I'm looking at it right now. X-Type Ace. Is that what it is? I don't know. It's in the very bottom. I'd have to go run over and grab it. But um, yeah, there it is. X-Type Ace, right? What is what do they call it? Yeah, sweet. OK, so that's probably the closest foam that I have hmm. felt perception wise of on my foot. Um, geometry three, wise it's a little bit the different three people the three people over in an x step are like oh cool yeah i know what you're talking about <laughs> yeah and <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a fun phone it's a fun phone yeah it, like it's not a bad phone by any means it's a very good phone it's just yeah. it's a little bit different like it has a little bit more give to it it feels a little flatter but at the same time it almost lets you use the geometry a little bit more if that makes sense speaking and, of geometry i think that's where my you know, my first take is coming from is like, this is a really stiff plate. I think that oh, totally. everybody designs their plate differently. This one's really stiff and you have a really wide forefoot. And in, I know you said the, the, um, the Metaspeed edge plus was kind of what was akin for you. I never ran in that shoe, but for me, this was really close to what the sky Metaspeed sky felt like for me because I mean, they both actually do have the five millimeter drop. I felt like when I was running in both of these shoes, that I compressed the heel just like you did, Matt. And then I had to climb up onto this bulbous forefoot and then it propulses you forward. So I think that the this shoe feels really forward moving, but it comes from the geometry more so than in the stiffness of the plate than it does from the foam itself. Because like you said, I think there is a good amount of bounce in this foam and kind of that poppy feeling. Um, but really, once you get onto the shoe, that's when you feel it. That's why for me, um, again, on my short run was on those slow paces, I felt really clunky because I had to just climb and just it felt really clunky for me in transitions. And that could, again, be my mechanics and how I run. But once I actually took it down to like my it took me going to like my 5K pace 
kind of below my 10k pace that's when it actually felt good to run in on this first impression and just trying to figure out how the shoe works and i think that's because i get i would get off the heel quicker and really load the shoe in the forefoot where it's supposed to really propulse you forward so um i think that's excuse me that stiffness of the plate plays a big role in just giving you that platform to really bounce off of and it feels i think the forefoot feels really cushioned i think that's a big part of this shoe as well I would I would comment based on that where you're like, hey, it really took until I got down to five Ks for me to feel and understand how this worked. I would definitely agree where I didn't really I weirdly enough, you say that I felt like this shoe worked really well as a tempo paced shoe. Like so that for me, I would definitely take this out for like 10K, maybe half marathon. Anything longer than that, I think it would be too aggressive for just my body. But it wasn't until I got into that tempo that I was like Oh, this is what this is designed for. It's like continuing to like you're you're moving, but you're not sprinting all out. You're moving, and it's it's a distant shoe. Gosh, I lost my train of thought. That that has <laughs> it's there's a certain way you gotta hit it for it for uh-huh. for you to feel. Oh, this is what this is for. I had some tr- weirdly. I had so I had trouble with easier efforts in this shoe, and I had trouble with all out sprints or like like changing paces really quick. So I did one of my mm-hmm. favorite workouts is. 100 on, 100 off for, you know, a couple miles uh, on a track. And I had trouble changing paces in this because, like, I was like, it felt like I'm like, I'm going through this. Where do I land? How do I? And then as soon as I got in a rhythm, it was fine. And that's mm-hmm. why those the, the kind of longer, faster efforts were good. But I don't think I would personally go marathon in this for me. Interesting. What, what do you guys think in terms of, like, diving into the stability category mm-hmm. of things? Where does this shoe kind of line up for you with other shoes in the same category with these marathon racing shoes, Matt? What do you think? In, in terms, you said in terms of stability. Yeah, I really like what they did. Um, I would almost give this borderline stable neutral. I gotta, I gotta test it a little bit more based and see how the foam breaks in. Sidewalls are really, really good. One of my favorite things is not they did not narrow the midfoot. Midfoot is wider. It's got. And we talked about this. I'm not sure if there's evidence on guidance line stuff, but just having this here, it's not aggressive. It's just like, this is a nice stable shoe. Is it to me a little aggressive for a longer effort? Yeah. But I actually think they did a, a really good job where it's not too biased in either direction. I'm curious what you two think about that. It was very centered and well done instead of like forcefully centered. I didn't really even seem to notice it actually. It's great. David, what do you think? Yeah, well, to go back on the other thing, I actually, to go back to the entirely other point, um, I felt like this is a shoe that I could possibly take 5K to marathon with no issue. Huh, like, this really? is a shoe right. that, like, I mean, I ran 20 seconds per mile slower than my marathon pace today for those float miles, and it was fine. And it mm-hmm. felt rhythmic, it felt good. I mean, like, yes, am I running up tempo? Sure. But, like, it's it didn't feel bad. Hmm. Um, just did nine miles, uh, on off miles, the on miles, I think we averaged about five Oh five, which if everything goes really well, is going to be slightly faster than half marathon pace, probably like five Oh seven to five ten. um, for half marathon marathon pace being about five thirty. the off miles were a bit about five fifty. So just a float where you're like having to slow down. Like, yes, I know. Like we're, we're still running somewhat quick, but like, <laughs> But I felt Sorry, like I could that's fall. Like, that's like as fast as my fastest mile. And that's what makes me smile. I love that. <laughs> I just love the range of runners. You know, we all have our different stuff that's like fast and slow for us. But sorry, keep going. I didn't mean to cut but, it off. Yeah, but like even those 550 miles, like they didn't feel bad. I didn't feel like it was clunky. I didn't feel like it was fighting me. I felt like I could still fall into rhythm just fine. Whether it was uphill, downhill, this workout today had rolling hills throughout the entire thing. And everything felt fine from a pace standpoint. I do agree, though, like the easy, easy paces, like warming up, cooling down those things. It doesn't feel quite as comfortable. It probably feels a little bit more comfortable than some of the other shoes, but it still isn't great. Um, This is a shoe that wants to turn over and wants to run fast. But um, I just wanted to get that out there um, about the other point. But with the stability, I do think they did a good job. I mean, this upper doesn't have that much stretch to it. I think the reinforcement is where it needs to be. The lockdown's good. I feel like there's not that much heel slippage. The sidewalls are done really well for a super shoe. Like this is arguably mm-hmm. the best sidewall of any super shoe that I've put on. Maybe the SC Elite might be a close second or tie, you know, like 
very, very good execution there. And everything feels very grounded. There's a good amount of outsole traction. It's a wide base. There's a deep midline groove. Like I feel, I feel good. And that's a shoe that I've been able to take to the track as well. And I think that's a true test is like when you're cornering at 420 pace, how does that like, <laughs> can this shoe actually take that? And it, and it can. And so it's one of those shoes, one of the few ones that I feel like, oh, I could actually run anything I want in this. And so mm-hmm. that's, that's a very high positive for this model specifically. So Nathan, I'm going to pull this back to you and go, what do you think about it? And then for the group, would you give this a stable neutral rating? Yeah, for me again, I I should just stop premising. Everyone knows at this point, I've only ran two miles in this shoe, but I think side to side, it did, it felt good. Like you said, Matt, I think the, the, the width of the platform is really nice. It doesn't have a lot of sidewalls, but the ones that exist in the heel, just give that little bit of extra structure and are nice it's not overly soft of a foam so it doesn't feel like you're falling i actually in the run i just did before this i wore this shoe and then i wore the sc elite and then i wore the vaporfly so i would i I rotated through them just to see and in comparison to the vaporfly in terms of stability it was crazy how much more stable the heel and midfoot felt in this shoe than in the vaporfly which i do fine in the vaporfly it's not too unstable for me but um i could definitely notice a difference in terms of just the 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 movement of my foot um underneath so i i think it definitely has more structure um i i think the one thing that stability we often talk side to side i do think there's something to say about stability forward and backwards from a trainer perspective i know like the glide ride was one shoe that i feel like you have to have good control of forward motion to be able to train well in the glide ride i think that there's something similar with this shoe for me and i would put the meta speed sky in the same category where you have to be able to control kind of that climb out and that propulsion forward to be able to stay stable forward and back so that, you know, cause as much as your tib post helps with the movement of your foot side to side, it's also helping with, um, plantar flexion of the foot and controlling the forward movement of your tibia, um, as it moves into dorsal flexion. So that's what keeps me from saying stable neutral for this shoe, I think is that forward backward kind of, uh, stability requirement. If that makes so sense. So what I'm hearing is, and I, this is kind of where I'm going with this shoe, where I think it, again, as we always say, it depends. I think for someone like David, who's really getting at, like they're, the paces are really fast, and I think you're going to gauge the foam geometry and plate differently than someone like Nathan, you or I, where, mm-hmm. again, I can, I can put, I'm not as fast as David. I can push into some of those paces, but not very long. So I think it's going to depend on who you are. And how the shoe breaks in too. So I think it could be, if you're the person that you got some good tuner over, you're moving quick. I think it's going to be for the rest of us that if we're not moving fast enough, there's some components you might have to fight to get over. I think the heel's good. I think it's just how you're loading that forefoot that maybe that's where that might change. Yeah, it's what kind of stability you need could make it stable neutral. If you have no problem with the forward backward stuff, then I, I could maybe see it. What do you think, David? I think it does qualify a stable neutral in my full honesty. I mean, I feel like they did a pretty darn good job across the board. And like the only thing that you could take points off for is that it's a peep of foam. Like it's a super soft, compliant, bouncy foam. Like that's going to take points away regardless, right? Like Mm -hmm. it's. Yeah, but in the world, it's like it's that's known. But how do you move around that? And I and I, I agree with you. I would argue with you that the, their P is a little bit firmer, though. Right? It is yeah. right, yeah. but wouldn't that put it closer to that stable neutral category? By like, yeah. like I, I feel like this is as close as most shoes have come. Like the mm-hmm. only other shoe I can think of that is is in that realm is probably the MetaSpeed Edge Plus. I think that's one. The the Endorphin Elite is I don't think I'd go that far. I think the really? Endorphin Elite's a little bit right. even though the power on HG is a little bit firmer, it's still very neutral. And then you have that like super sharp toe spring. I love that shoe. Yeah. I mean I ran my marathon in that shoe. You know, yeah. like but I I I think that's still neutral. I, I think yeah. what Nate's talking about, that really sharp toe spring, like you gotta be able to control your motion in order to run well in that shoe. And I feel like you don't have to do that as much in the Rocket X2. Like, I feel like I feel pretty stable underfoot. I wouldn't think about taking the Endorphin Elite on the track. I just wouldn't. Whereas this shoe, like, I would go and take it on the track. 
Like, and I wouldn't think twice about it. And I think that's also part of it is how well can I corner? How quick can I run without having to worry about where my feet are? I think the other thing I think about with stable neutral is for, is for the four, four and a half, five hour marathoner. Is this a shoe that gives you the kind of structure and support you want, right? And we we can talk about that. Maybe that's a, worth a conversation yeah. right now. But I think the stability needs there are different than like running on a track because, you know, doing track workouts as a you know three and a half uh, you know hour marathon even for me, the the demand for those corners is so much less than going at the pace that you're going. Um, so I think that the stability needs are a little bit different if you just need something that is keeping you centered and moving forward you know, for four hours versus something that keeps you as you corner, as you are, you know, getting fast turnover. Um, I don't disagree that it's, it's, I I was just looking at my shoe wall and I'm like, I'm pretty sure, like, I agree that this is probably the closest, maybe the most quote unquote stable, um, super shoe there is. I think maybe Puma Puma Deviate Nitro Elite maybe is in that category just because of some of the lower feel to it and some of the ground feel. Maybe the Endorphin Pro 3. Um, I know, Matt, you had talked about, you had done like a stability racing shoe video. Mm -hmm. Um, But I I don't know. I think it has all the components. Um, I think mainly this wide midfoot just really helps. But I think the wider midfoot, the the which is not surprising for Hoka, the fairly high sidewalls in the heel on the medial lateral side, and then the the foam being a little bit on the firmer end definitely helps. But how that's going to feel, like you said, over four to five hours versus somebody who runs it like David in two twenty ish, that that's probably going to be a little different, right? And I don't know, I don't know the answer to that. It's a good question. The question you do have, that brought and up. it's not just pace that'll make it feel different. I think it's just how you hit the ground with a shoe like this. Yeah. Like, how, you know, how are you moving across the ground in terms of how long your foot is there? What part you hit on? How long you stay in each section, which is not easily measurable. But I think I think you'll know when you put this shoe on. You'll know if it's the right one for you. Yeah. Um, for me. I am only two miles in, and I don't I don't think so so far for me. It just was. One of the things that happened for me, I was just listening to how loud different shoes were. Um, and I felt like I had to really work to figure this shoe out at each of those paces. And it was really loud when I'd hit the ground. So I don't know if I'm, that's why I got to get more miles on it. But um, anyway, any other thoughts on stability? Again, I think they did a, a good job. It's good to see people finally listening about midfoot width going, hey, you can still have a max stack height super shoe with it and keeping the weight lighter while still widening the midfoot you need that it's basic physics the taller the platform is the platform does need to be wider or now you're creating instability so you're going to limit the number of people who might be able to use it as long as you as they might want so this is just another good example of hey companies you can do this it can be done you just got to mess with the geometry and look at you know where you're taking cutouts from but i think they did a good job it was great yeah, it's a double on that. I, I mean, I feel like the outsole is actually decently sticky. Like, yeah, and thick. I took it in the pouring <laughs> rain and it was fine. Like, yeah. it was, I don't know. It's like, it's something you don't see on these shoes very often anymore. Where, like, this is a shoe that the traction and the outsole is something that you can depend on. And that's, it felt mm-hmm. like in the last couple of years, you had to sacrifice that for a racing shoe in it. This feels like that nice hybrid, like it's a racing shoe, but it's also like, it feels like it could kind of be a little bit of a faster, lightweight trainer as well. Yeah. It's also fun. I think that Hoka has a shoe that actually feels, it actually feels different, yeah. you know, it feels mm-hmm. special. It feels yeah. like a, you know, and they, in terms of market share, they're doing awesome. Right. But it, mm-hmm. it is fun for a company that has a lot of resources to put something into production that's got some backing behind it i'm sure uh in terms of how they chose to develop the way they did and it i think it came out really well like i said yeah. it's not it's not necessarily the right one for me i don't think i'm going to get more in it and i'll contribute to the full review for sure um but it does feel really fun like i said and like i said meta speed sky didn't work for me either it's a great shoe not not the best one for me but um is there anything um else that you y'all want to talk about with this shoe David, you talked about some comparisons. Are there any other comparisons that we want to make? Either that it's maybe it's the shoe it's least like or the shoe it's most like. Um, The shoe it's least like is this is the SC Elite. (laughs) 
which we're going to go into favorite. next. That's yeah. that's pretty fair. I was going to say the RC Elite 2, but uh, I mean, the SC oh, Elite yeah. 3 is the continuation of the RC Elite 2. So, um, I mean, I, I think I just want to go on the record and say, I think like Hoka's kind of got a little bit of a bad rep over the last few years with the Rocket X in comparison to the other shoes. And I, I feel like the Rocket X 2 does deserve a conversation point with these other shoes on the market. And I think mm-hmm. it's... I think it's a very valid racing shoe. And I think yes. it's one that like, if you saw that on the start line, you're not going to be like, Oh wow, this, this other shoe is out. Like, why aren't you running in that shoe? Like it's definitely a super shoe in the category. And I think it's definitely comparable. And I think it would just depend on the person's biomechanics. Mm-hmm. The other shoe I think it's not very much like is actually the endorphin pro three though. I think that's another one that I throw mm-hmm. in there. And you had said the stability thing, and I was like, I've never felt that stable in the Endorphin Pro 3. I just haven't. Like, it's it's very high up. The Power MPB, there's a lot of it. It feels soft. soft. It's very wide. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's not that it's, like, bad. It just, it feels very neutral to me. Like, it doesn't (laughs) feel like I have any additional support or guidance by any means. It just... It's a good shoe. I have over 100 miles in that shoe. I mean, probably closer to 150. But, um... With this shoe, it's just, they, they did a lot of things well, but there's just so much foam and there's a lot of compliance to it. And there's a lot of kind of movement and give the upper lockdown on that shoe saves it by far, but like it, it's not very stable to me, you know, like, and this is the opposite. I think on this end where like, if I'm going to have to flip a U-turn on a course or take a really hard corner, I'm going to take this easily. Interesting. Mm-hmm. But if I'm running a 50k, I might actually take this. I don't know. Like, it's right. one of those things where it just depends on what your goal I, is and what you're wanting. But I, I will say, bouncing off that just a little bit, I think there are. It is at. It's a. It's definitely in the conversation. It is. It is a super shoe. It's got all the true components. It's got all the stuff that we've talked about for years. Going, you need to have this, 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 this. I I think it's more comparable to shoes like the nike vaporfly and although it's different in the same category endorphin pro 3 a6 meta speed sky stuff like that but when you want to go up to that other level where the alpha fly the rebellion pro is the endorphin elite i think that's different i think those three are in a very different category from where the um rocket x2 is it's a great shoe but it's just it's in a different what do you do think you, am i do am you I mean- talking about my well, do you mean category based on like running economy benefit or or what sort of category are you creating? Yeah, I think it's like I, I think these new shoes like the Alpha Fly, those ones are like almost like they're not super, they're like ultra shoes, right? They're just kind of on this next level in terms of stack height, in terms of the geometries are really crazy. Um, and then the Alpha Fly. So I think and I could I, I might be able to argue maybe economy, but I don't know enough about the economy changing this to, to sit on that. I, to be I, or maybe it's first. like, hey, I would, I might use these more for marathon kind of effort versus this is more like. I think it's more that. I think it's more yeah, like the design yes. of like, maybe. like this is a more yeah. like you put it on. You're like, this is a marathon shoe. This is a shoe that I'm going to yeah. take 26.2 and I'm going to love it. Right. But I might not love it as much at 13.1. I might not love it as much at 6.2 or 3.1 yeah. for that matter. Like, I think it's just a matter of the design. And and again, this comes back down to the person's biomechanics, but I think there's some certain shoes out there right now that are like, this is a marathon shoe. Like, this is designed for 26.2, and, like, it's a top-shelf marathon option. And, like, I don't think I'm going to pick it up for anything else. But for the marathon, this is great. Yeah. And I I think that's that's more what we're going down as far as that. Yeah, that's a better way of translating what I'm trying to say but having difficult. These are very much marathon shoes that's really what they're designed for whereas i think the rocket x2 for me personally is a shoe that i would probably use for something short of the marathon it's still a phenomenal distance racing shoe but it wouldn't be my first choice for marathon just like the vape i know people do Vaporfly is not my first choice for a marathon as well but i and i i think for shorter distances yes but there's just i'm, I'm not categorizing those very well so well, and i could i could buy your categories to as you're categorizing them for yourself, you know, like as yeah. you put them into your own categories for where they would fit in terms of your comfort level in each pacing, yeah. 
Um, but I, you know, Dustin Jobert's article on running economy, the, the one right after the alpha fly and vapor fly was the Metaspeed sky. That was like the closest one. So it was kind of in that category with those shoes. But I do think a big difference is that shaping. So like the Mm -hmm. endorphin elite has that really late sharp toe spring. That's also true in the Metaspeed sky. Um, I think you kind of have that a little bit here with the rocket X where it's that more sharp, um, toe spring at the end versus some of the more gradual ones like the endorphin speed, uh, Oh, no, Endorphin Pro 3, Pro 3, that's more gradual. You know, you have, um, you know, whatever this is, the SC Elite 3, that has more of that gradual, which we're going to talk all about that shoe. So yeah. I think that for me is a big difference too, is how sharp of a toe spring is it? And I personally do so much better with those more smooth, gradual ones than those late, late stage end rockers, which is opposite for other people. <laughs> so Well, and it depends on the distance. I love yeah, that sharp sure. toe spring for the long stuff. I want to feel like I could just fall into rhythm. I can forget about what I'm doing and just like just kind of fall into each next step. But when I'm running fast and I'm really trying to run like a 5K, 10K and potentially even a half, depending how hard we're getting after this thing, like I want to dig into the ground. I really want to push off of it. And the toe spring can get in the way of that sometimes. Yeah. So I I think it just depends on the usage of the shoe, you know, and, and how that works for us. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I love both. I, I love both designs. And like, so something like the Endorphin Elite, one of my favorite shoes ever. The Takumi Sen 9, also one of my favorite shoes ever. And they're very different designs. And so, yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, let's transition to our next shoe that we're going to be talking about. We're going to do another review, and then we're going to talk about what shoe that we would choose for our best effort at a half marathon and a marathon right now. What would we choose? But the shoe we're going to talk about next is the New Balance um, Fuel Cell SC Elite version 3. We just got pairs of these about a week and a half ago. David's had one for a little bit longer, and he already has his full review on the website. They were just able to get us um, the rest of our team pairs, and we've gotten some miles in. And we already mentioned that this shoe is categorically different and feels so different. Uh, Maybe not categorically, but feels so different than the Rocket X2. So let's talk about that a little bit. Um, Does somebody have specs for us on this shoe that we can roll off for people? I do. So men's size nine, New Balance using size nine, uh, is 7.6 ounces for men's. I should have had women's up. I'm sorry. Um, the stack height is 40 millimeters in the heel, 36 millimeters in the forefoot for a four millimeter drop, which it feels higher than a four millimeter drop, but I think we'll talk about that shortly. Mm-hmm. Um, they've got their uh, Energy Arc large plate with their split fairly very similar to the sc trainer still using um the fuel cell foam full length new upper totally new shoe great so let's let's just go into the first category let's talk about fit with this shoe what you guys think of the fit um tell us a little bit about what this upper is constructed like and how it worked for you so far david you want to start that yeah i mean This is one of those things where I felt like it fits so, so well in so many ways and then just totally missed the mark in some other ways. Yeah. And it's just like one of those shoes that like I just really, really wanted to love. And it was like there was a couple things in there that I was like, I don't like this. And when we're talking about the fit specifically, so we're looking at a very like sock like knit upper it's reinforced decently well. There's a little bit of stretch to it, but it's not like this thing is flopping all over the place. It actually holds its structure pretty well. If I pulled it up here, so for the listeners, you can't see this, but like it's a decently wide midfoot for a racing shoe. It's a decently wide forefoot for a racing shoe. Volume's pretty accommodating and it's very sock-like. You have a very stretchy tongue here where it's like a knit and it's very embedded in the lacing system. So it's kind of like a one piece type fit. And everything holds itself together pretty well. I mean, there's a minimal heel counter. It's just like very, very shallow here and it holds the structure right here, but you can still like have a little bit of sense. Like if you have sensitivity, it's probably gonna work uh, most of the time. And the fit around that area is pretty solid. And so from a fit and comfort standpoint of the actual materials, it feels pretty darn good. Where I have my gripe with it is that lacing system. And I feel like that's something that we've heard over and over again from other channels as well, 
And where it bites down, this tongue is as nice as it is. It's very, very thin and things bite into it and it deforms on itself pretty easily. And so that part doesn't hold its structure very well. And specifically that last eyelet here on the lateral side seems to dig into my ankle when I'm making turns and things like that. And then I noticed as well when I'm running up tempo and I'm, or not even up tempo, just in general, if I'm running downhill, I notice even these laces up front, I start feeling it dig into my foot. So it's like these laces are biting more often than they aren't. And that is a little bit of a deal breaker for me if I'm going to pick it on race day. But other than that, I really, really love this shoe. So it's like it's a small thing yeah. that like if I'm willing to look the other way, I guess it's gonna... just got to ask that question. I'm going to jump in and piggyback off of it because you talked about sock like upper. I think it, f I mean, it feels so comfortable. It's a really comfortable material in terms of <laughs> saying it's so different than the uh, Rocket X2. It gen the uppers couldn't be more different. You have this really plastic, synthetic, really like locked down midfoot and heel. Whereas in this one, you get this sock like booty construction, soft, very comfortable oriented upper, which was still being somewhat secure. I had the exact same biting experience from the laces. And I think a big part of it is because they're using this kind of stitched lacing system where the laces don't have eyelets, but they go through this string that has periodic stitching that holds the string in place. Um, on the inside of the shoe, you have to have these, and if, if you, I don't know if y'all can see it um, in the video, but it does have these big stitching bulbous areas throughout the tongue area because it has to be there so that's what i'm feeling is that kind of like pushing down of those stitched areas into my foot and, and it's not terrible it's not like a deal breaker for me um, in terms of taking it out for longer runs but it is present and so that's kind of just a bummer where i feel like that could just be avoided probably pretty easily i do feel too in terms of lockdown it locks down pretty well if i'm not really picking up the pace, but once I'm really putting effort down, I can't really lace it tight enough because of how thin the tongue is and the type of lacing system. I couldn't get it snug enough without irritating the top of my foot. So I do get some heel slippage when I'm putting in harder effort. So the upper is this mix between like, if I'm going out on just like a smooth run, whether at like moderate paces or easy long run, the upper feels great. If it's really pushing the pace and I have to try to lock it down, that's where I start to have kind of more biting from that from that stitching um, in the lacing system, and I get some heel slippage. Matt, what about you? Yeah, I, I would agree with both of you on that. I would say this is, the upper's comfortable. I have worn this on an easy run, which I, I can't do that for a lot of super shoes, but this was fine right out of the box. Um, I wore this as a casual shoe all day long and had no problems. It was great. <laughs> Students didn't say anything. I'm offended. <laughs> well, but they probably yeah, don't. Or, it. Yeah, uh -huh. they should know by now. Go. What's what's he wearing on his feet? Is it? But they don't. So the upper is really wide, and the volume is fairly high for a super shoe. I think if you have wide feet and mm -hmm. you've been struggling and finding a super shoe that accommodates that, this is definitely one that I would consider. I was looking at this earlier. This does not come in wide. I'm kind of surprised that New Balance didn't do that but i guess i'm not surprised just because there is still enough volume the challenge with that is i had the same experience as nathan i think david said this as well G we're going easy pace or up tempo pace like marathon pace this feels great the second you try to take it any faster this there is just not enough structure and security there to keep that comfortably there i'm going to take it for a track workout tomorrow just because i want to rip my feet no i'm just kidding but I just I want to see what happens because when I've tried to do that and strides and stuff like that, it just it doesn't have the right lockdown. But if you're looking this the upper the the midsole matches it, but the upper is definitely like, hey, this is for a long effort, right? A longer would be great. A up tempo run, marathon pace run would be great. But I think anything beyond that, there's not the security to be able to handle that. But it's wide, really comfortable. Just it, it's going to be comfortable for a different purpose. Mm -hmm. And Matt, was the heel, I know this one has more of a heel counter. Yeah. Um, was that comfortable for you? I know you're the one who was yeah, sensitive it, heels. That's something people got to be wary of. It did not bother me because what I have learned over time is it, as long as this thing is rounded and kind of goes back a little bit, 
it doesn't tend to bother my heel. When they're kind of more flat and stiff, then they bother me. And I, I just realized that last week. I'm like, why is it these things are not bothering me? So for me, it didn't bother me. I think for others that are really sensitive, it's not the stiffest thing out there, but I'd still be just a teeny bit cautious. There's some flexibility, so I wouldn't be too worried. But okay. just know. It's not it's not the Rocket X where there's no a Rocket no X 2 where there's counter. no heel counter. There is a counter back there. But yeah. I just – it doesn't – the, the – the counter here, I don't think, does enough to add any additional security, to be honest. It just adds some structure to the rear foot. Yep. Cool. David, you uh, got something? Yeah, I will say I've taken it to the track, and it did just fine. I mean, I've run pretty fast in this shoe with no issues. And I think a large part of that is the geometry. I mean, the toe spring isn't that sharp. So it's like one of those things where it lets you load the shoe in a way you want to load the shoe and it doesn't force you to fall into a certain rhythm and shoes that come to mind for me are shoes that are similar like the takumi sen where it's a little bit flatter i mean even the sc elite like there's some flexibility to that carbon plate like it's it's stiff it's rigid but like you can load that thing and do what you want with it and it's one of those shoes that like i feel like i could run pretty fast in it without that much issue um, I actually felt the opposite going the other way. Like I, I was like, it doesn't feel bad at like a marathon type pace, but it just, I don't know. It just, it's a weird shoe. And I said this in my video, you know, for the YouTube channel where uh, it's like, it's a jack of all trades. I wrote that in the written review as well, where it, it could do everything pretty well, but I, I don't know if I would pick it as my top choice in any specific category. Mm. But if you're looking for a shoe that can do it, everything, this is one of them from a responsiveness and ride standpoint. I was going to say, we, let's kind of dive fully into that ride category. Um, so I'll, I'll kind of kick this one off. And I, I think I actually have pretty much full miles on this shoe, but it is so soft and bouncy. It's got like a big soft bounce when I, for me, when I, when I run in it, not a propulsive bounce, but a cushion bounce, if that makes sense. So yeah. it's got a, it's got a different, sort of feel to it again than something like the rocket x2 that we just talked about where i feel like you sink into it and you kind of roll forward and then you you bounce off of it um, but it's not throwing you forward but it's just more rhythmic and smooth from heel to forefoot and way more gradual um and i i find that i can take this thing down below 10 minute per mile pace i did it this week and i felt great in it and I was like, this is awesome. I also brought it up to, you know, my half marathon pace, which is hopefully, <laughs> I haven't raced a half marathon in a while, but hopefully, you know, sub seven minute per mile pace. It felt really good there. So I felt like it, it can do all of those things, which is really nice for workouts too. Um, but in terms of the ride, again, I feel like fuel cell has always been soft. This continues to be soft, um, but the geometry doesn't feel as aggressive. It feels more smooth and and kind of just consistent from heel to forefoot. You can just roll through. Unlike being super loud in this shoe on the treadmill, this one is, I'm so quiet. Um, and I actually prefer the ride of this shoe than I do to the Rocket X2 for myself. Um, and I just, I feel like I can get into rhythm so much easier and I'm not fighting the shoe at all. Whereas I feel like I'm fighting the Rocket X2 a little bit. So the geometry and, you know, the, the amount of softness and how I transitioned felt really good. Um, Matt, what do you think? I would definitely agree um, where it's super soft and feels really like, again, it's that like relaxed bounce. This is probably the most, I don't want this to come off the wrong way. It's the most, it's the least aggressive super shoe in a good way where yes, you can go take it at some training paces and it's not going to bite you or something for me in the Rocket X2, like I, it's not a shoe meant to run easy. It doesn't feel, it kind of feels weird. It feels like I'm fighting it. As you said, this one, it kind of just adapts to what you do. And I think David, where you mentioned, yes, just it, you can, it's easier to be in a little bit of control with the shoe in regards to the ride where I can push a little faster. It doesn't quite go as fast a lot as, as I might want, but yeah, it's just, it's super soft, very comfortable, very comfortable at a variety of paces. So I think that jack of all trades is good, but it's kind of the Matt with, this is going to come off really mean, but the, what is it? The master, the master of, of none. one or master of one or master of none kind of thing. 
But yeah. I, that's really not true, though. I think because for me, ride wise, being less aggressive, I think this is a great option for the newer runner looking for a super shoe because I it's it just feels like a very very well cushioned trainer that's lighter, very soft that you can still move in, which is great. It's definitely a super shoe though because you can go like when you start moving with it, you're like, okay, this can go. Yeah, maybe not as not all out, so to speak. Before David goes to, I I also want to just jump back in and talk about drop. I know it's this is a four millimeter reference, drop, yeah. yeah but it, it like you said, Matt. For me, this feels so much higher. Like this feels more like for me a six to eight millimeter drop shoe, where I'm just kind of falling down the platform the whole way. Mm-hmm. And even though this has technically the SC Elite has less of a drop <laughs> by one millimeter than the Rocket X2. The Rocket X2 feels way lower to me yep. than I feel like I have to get up on my toes a lot more in this in the X2 than I do in the SC Elite. And I just I feel like it's I don't know. And I think it's because of that more early stage rocker that you just start falling down that rocker platform a little bit earlier than having to get up onto it in some of these other shoes. But that's just how my experience on the shoe was. I, yeah, I that that's, that's where I that's where I disagree. I feel like right. it feels lower for that reason. Because you transition a little bit quicker and there's so much cushioning in the forefoot. Like, it feels like I'm higher up in the forefoot. Like, it genuinely feels like, oh, this is a higher stack height in the forefoot. And it is. It's at 36. Um, right. So, like, I, I felt like I had more forefoot cushioning. Like, is it beveled well? Yes. Does it transition well? Yes. But that doesn't make it feel higher drop to me. Like, it fe- what I go off of is that midfoot forward. How does that feel up front? You know, like mm-hmm. for me, it does feel like it's a low drop super shoe. It's mm-hmm. it's four millimeters and it feels like it to me. Interesting. I think this is really important. And we've talked about this before where you have to be careful with that static drop measurement because it's going to vary depending on how you load the shoe, where you're loading it, how quickly you're going through it. And I, I had the same, I, David, I understand why you, ha- why you had that experience because I think when I've pushed a little bit, I've gotten that a little bit more. But Nathan, I've had the same experience where you were. It does not feel like a four millimeter drop shoe, whereas the rocket. Oh, X2 and I will. I, I do want to say, like, I don't. Longer. Yeah. I don't say four millimeter drop in the way of like, oh, my calves are working. It feels like yeah. it's a low thing. Like I'm climbing out of this. Like it feels yeah. like a four millimeter in the sense that there's good forefoot cushioning and there's a lot more foam up front there. That's it's right. not. It's yeah. not that I'm working harder or that my calves are working. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. It it feels very rhythmic. The transitions are great. I mean, I actually really like this shoe, but it feels like it feels pretty accurate as far as where those stack heights are for me, where I'm landing and how I'm transitioning. But as far as like, oh, in theory, a four millimeter drop shoe is going to load my calves a little more. It doesn't feel that way, you right. know, and, and sure. if we're going off of how we feel that way, then I guess it feels like an eight or nine millimeter drop, but that's, that's not how right. I perceive it. It's, you know, it, it, it's all relative. Yeah. Yeah. It's all relative. It's like alpha fly one was a four millimeter drop and it didn't feel like it was destroying my calves. Right. So it felt like that for me. <laughs> <laughs> cool. That's, so that's the wonderful thing about human differences. So it's good. Right. Let's talk a little bit about stability. So, you know, we had just talked about the X2, potentially one of the more stable, if not the most, you know, stable platform in terms of contact and foam compound and all that. Where do we put this shoe? How do you guys feel about stability with this shoe? Matt, what do you think? No, David, go first, because I've been struggling with this since I got it. Not in a bad way, just going, what what does this mean? So, David, go first. I mean, it comes back down to that uh, argument, right? Like you asked earlier if the Rocket X2 is stable neutral. And I think the SC Elite 3 does a lot of really good things. I do. But Fuel Cell is also really soft and compliant. So it's, I think they did a great job of stabilizing it. It just doesn't run that stable. Like, it, but it's not, I don't mean that in a bad way. It's just, no. it's hard to stabilize Fuel Cell. Like, it's just a really soft, compliant midsole. Um, but I think they did do some things really well. Like, I feel like that deep groove does make me feel decently centered. I feel like the outsole traction's pretty good. I feel like the upper lockdown is solid. I feel like the transitions from the heel through the forefoot are good. I feel like the base is solid. It's wide, you know, like I felt for how high up I was and for how soft fuel cell is, I felt like I was decently grounded. And like, that was one of those things, like I was saying earlier, I could take this shoe to the track. 
And RC Elite 2, I couldn't. My ankles were sore. I did not, I felt clownish. I did not feel good on the track running in the RC Elite 2. I will say yeah. that outright. I just did yeah. not do well in that shoe. And it was one of those shoes where it was like, oh, this is a great like long run shoe. I can kind of do some up tempo work in it. But I, I just, I wasn't going to grab it for race day. I wasn't going to grab it for the track. Like, very select days but like for the sc elite three i feel like that versatility is so much better and yeah. i feel like i feel like it's definitely a giant step in the right direction for this model specifically and i i feel like they did the stability pretty darn good for what they are working with because fuel cell is so soft it is so compliant i wouldn't say it's stable neutral this is certainly stable i mean i'm not stable sorry my apologies <laughs> it is certainly neutral not it is certainly yeah. neutral please do not sound bite that um <laughs> but like it is it. <laughs> yeah like it's just one of those things like they what they could do well they did well what they could control they yeah. could control uh they did control but th like this at the end of the day is still a neutral shoe it's still a super shoe it's still a very compliant foam yeah and yeah, I, I think for what they could do, they did well. So I Maybe totally agree. I agree with okay. you. And I'll just add one thing, like, well, a couple things. This, the midfoot is more narrow too. So the compliant foam is definitely what, I, what was in my mind about. That's just what you're working with. You're going to have more wobble and you're going to need to, you know, be, you know, structured in yourself and stable as you transition forward on something that's a little bit softer and more compliant. Then it is a more narrow midfoot. It does come in and taper down into this this section here. The thing that I think helps with it not feeling like I don't think this feels unstable. I think it just feels you know like a neutral shoe. It doesn't feel like an unstable shoe. And I think part of it is because of how decoupled. So some guidance lines I think don't do anything. They just are a little groove that are so shallow that don't do anything. Something like this is very wide. So this pillar of foam acts very independently of this pillar of foam. And when you load it, they have the potential to splay outwards. I think, and I think I notice that when I land where I feel like it kind of splays out and that adds to that platform contact area. Um, just, it doesn't, it's not so tied together. So it allows it to kind of, kind of marshmallow outwards, if that makes sense, uh, as you land and move through the shoe. So, um, again, I agree with everything that David said, and that's just a couple things to add. Matt, what are your, where is your inner uh, wrestling going? Yeah, I would, I think that accurately puts it, that hits the nail on the head. You both said this where I think New Balance did a very good job with what they have to work with. Fuel cell, it's great. A lot of people like it. It is soft. It is, I think this, I don't, I, I'm curious to know if you agree with me one of the softest foams on the market. Oh, for sure. At least how it feels. Um, the, the sidewalls are good in terms of kind of keeping you there, but the foam is so soft. The side, I mean, if you're really moving through those, that's, you're going to go through those like butter, uh, the decoupling here and the ability to spread and create a wider platform. I like Nathan, I feel the same thing. I think the energy arc does a good job of facilitating a transition forward. So I think foot and ankle. So here's where, and I said the same thing with the RC elite, but I think this is where they, they, this is better. I think the RC Elite, because I pissed off my post hip and deep hip rotators in the RC Elite. Because I was like, this is so comfortable. I'm going to do some long runs in it. And then I wasn't ready for that. And it got irritated because it was so unstable. It was unstable, especially higher up. So I think this does a better job. It's still a neutral shoe. It's not unstable, but it's also not a stable shoe. And I think where something this soft is really going to work is less, less foot and ankle. So foot and ankle, you'll probably be okay, but... Your, your hip and higher up, you need to make sure you've got good stability there. So somebody that's got not the best stability at the pelvis, right? So not so good glute med or deep hip rotators. This one might be a little bit of a struggle. Whereas you're somebody that goes, hey, my hips are really, really strong. I just need a little help facilitating a transition forward to the foot and ankle, just a teeny bit. I think you'll be fine, but it's still a neutral shoe and not something you should come looking for stability in. It's just not unstable. Yeah. So... Before I, I want to wrap this shoe up pretty quick, and um, the only shoe I really want to dive into a quick comparison on and just get your thoughts. And we've we've talked about this as a team a little bit. Thought it would be good to bring it up during this. Is earlier or last year they they released the um, SC Trainer. So you have this high stack rocker shoe that's supposed to be this trainer. So I have mine here. We talked about this shoe, the SC Elite, being kind of this jack of all trades, being able to do a lot of stuff. Are these shoes like pretty similar or are they very different? Is there a place for both of them? I don't think Matt has anything he wants to say. Just kidding, Matt. Matt, what are your thoughts on like comparisons between these two? If there's a spot for both of them, um, 
What, what, what are your thoughts? I, I honestly can't think of a better pairing. If you like how the SC Elite feels, you're going to like how the, the SC Trainer feels. If you like how the SC Trainer feels and you want a racing shoe version of it, yeah, it's going to be great. I think they have a lot of things that are similar, and I know the SC Trainer is meant as a training shoe, and this is made, meant as a racing shoe, and there's a lot of components they share, be it the Energy Arc, be it the Foam, be a lot of different components. So I think there's still a place for them because they are different. This is really ma- meant as a faster shoe. It's meant as a racing shoe. You're really not supposed to, that was not the purpose of the SC Elite. The SC Elite was a training shoe. I understood that you were, you could be able to do maybe some up-tempo stuff in it, but it really wasn't that. It was meant for, hey, how do we take this kind of stuff and turn it into a training shoe? This is still meant to be an it's up-tempo heavy too. workout racing shoe. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's like, what? Yeah, it's Over like 11, 11, 11 ounces, 11 ounces. I, yeah. I was going to yeah. tell you, I Does do it? not want to run a race in an 11-ounce shoe. I'm right. going to put yeah. that so, out there yeah. right now. So... <laughs> It is a training shoe. It is. It, it still might be a good thing for someone who's a four-hour-plus marathoner who's like, I just want as much cushion as possible and a plate. Oh, yeah. That's fine. But I think if you want – these two shoes do complement each other. Um, well, just because the SC Elite is, is meant as a training shoe and the geometry like lines up really well, whereas this one, it can do that, but I would rather do some up-tempo stuff in it. How was the fit for you guys between these two? I like the fit of the SC Elite better. Yeah. I did. Was Outside it of the more... lacing thing. I feel, I feel like I got to like preface the lacing issue. <laughs> like, like otherwise it was really nice. <laughs> like it was yeah. just like, that was like the one thing. And it happened to be a kind of a big thing for me. Yep. And it's honestly, the bummer is for the SC Elite, it's a booty construction done well. There's bad booty constructions. It's done well, yeah. except the lacing. Like it could have been so good. It was yeah. anyway. Right. I think it was good. I think it's going to do really well for people with higher volume feet or wider feet, especially. But for yeah. those of us that still need to get some lockdown, those laces do bite a little bit. Was the what about? Okay, so comparison between the trainer SC trainer and SC Elite yeah. was fit similar. You said it, you liked it more, but was it more roomy? Was it less roomy for y'all? What was what was that? I feel like they're both pretty accommodating. They're both pretty roomy. I felt like the SC trainer had a little bit more reinforcement built into it, as a trainer probably would. Um, it didn't feel quite as, let's say, stretchy on the material itself, you know, on, from a turning standpoint. And it, it, I mean, what is the SC trainer at? It's like 47 millimeters or something crazy. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like, there. you have to have some more reinforcement when you're that high up. Like, it's so it's a little bit different. It's a little bit more structured, I guess I, I would say from an upper material, how they lock it down standpoint. Like you really need to make sure you're on that platform, because if you're not, you're about to go break an ankle. And I mean, I don't want to quote the great Kofuzi on this saying break my ankles, but uh, <laughs> like <laughs> there are <laughs> like you need to make sure that shoe is done well so that you don't do something bad. Whereas I feel like you don't have to worry about that as much with the S Elite. So it's funny. I, I I showed everybody on our team a video of this, but everyone was like, "Oh yeah, the upper of the SC Trainer feels good. It feels like like I got room. There's plenty of space, and I it is the tightest upper that I wore last year in my in my normal size nine. And I sent a video to everybody about how my foot is literally pushing off the edge of the platform. I'm pretty sure I got like a faulty pair because it is the, the SC trainer pair that I have is so snug. My toes butt up on the edge on the front and it's, it says it's the right size, but I think they sent me a, a pair that's not actually what it is because it is so tight so for me <laughs> which potentially with a faulty pair i knew where this the, was going the sc elite is has so much more room for me than the trainer but maybe that's not worth listening to because i i seriously don't know why this pair of sc trainers is so tight for me so either new balance send him another pair or i'm gonna go find one on ebay to get another uh <laughs> <laughs> a refit oh cool shoe matt anything for, that you want to add or should we finish move on to our final segment i think everything that uh, on definitely that fit comparison and the comparison in general i think has been has been said there's just more it feels like more structure in the sc trainer um than yeah. that in the sc elite definitely more volume in in the i i guess the one thing i would say is especially structure wise i felt like the sc elite tapered a little bit more 
And just because of the, I think the toe guard's a little stiffer, but once I got through it's fine. But there's this has a much more stretchy and flexible upper compared to that. But cool. All right, so here we go. Final segment. We're just gonna relatively quick fire. You can give a little bit of a caveat as why you choose what you do. But um, the question is, if you were to take a shoe out to try to hit your best marathon time and another shoe to take out for your best half marathon time. Did I say half marathon twice? No. Half no. marathon time. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> so one shoe for your half marathon, one shoe for your marathon. Which one would you take out? It could be the same answer, but what would be your choices for the long distance races if you were going to try to take it out today? David, are you ready for this? Of course I'm not. Ah, uh, Matt, are you ready? Uh... Do you want to go first? Oh That's such a gosh. loaded question, man. Yeah. You're, you're going to drop knew. that on me. Like, I, yeah, I knew it, it, but I didn't we know it. it <laughs> like, I knew it as time. of like one minute before the video <laughs> recorded. Okay. Like this well, is one of those things. We did. We did send the, the uh, outline earlier today, but uh, somebody oh was in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I can, I'll, I'll go. I'll no, go. no, no. I got it. Man. I mean, I, I have I'm, I'm an ready. answer. I'm ready. So, my half marathon racing shoe right now would be the Endorphin Pro 3. I just ran a five mile race in it. Um, felt really good. I like the I like the geometry. I like the foam. I did well in the Endorphin Pro 2 for my last marathon. I don't think I'm in shape to take a shoe like this for the whole marathon. Well, I'm not in the shape to run a marathon at all. But half marathon, I would take the Endorphin Pro 3. I think I fit. It fits my rhythm really well, um, and just feels like I can get get going get going in this shoe so that would be my choice for half marathon choice for marathon is between two shoes sorry um but it's between and that's partially because i'm not ready to run a marathon right now so it's hard to project but it would be the endorphin uh, speed three or the um a6 super blast and this is the one that i lean towards is to do it in the super blast i just i i think as this shoe is broken in more it has the perfect amount of bounce but it's a really wide platform underneath so I just really think that I, I've I've done my longest run in a while. I did like a 14 and a half mile run in this shoe at like a 715 pace, which for me is like working decently hard. And it just felt awesome. And it was my first time going over 10 miles um, in a while. So I just felt really confident. Um, and so I think this would be the shoe that I would take out just for that wider platform, still lightweight, has some of that bounce, not super rigid. So it, if I do slow down, it feels good at those slower paces, which could definitely happen for me during a marathon. So that's my pick. Matt, what do you got? All right, I'm going to do what you just did. So if for half marathon, if I was <laughs> feeling really, really good and I'm like, I want to run really fast, I would take the Rocket X2 only because wow. I just hit a really fast tempo run. Uh, I think because I've been on the track more, I'm going to do better and something that's a little more aggressive. If I really wasn't going, oh, I got to I'm not trusting myself. I would take the Endorphin Pro 3 only because I've run those distances and I know I can trust this shoe. 10K half marathon like I've done that before. So I know that um, for marathon, I think this the Endorphin Elite is still going to be my go to of shoe I can trust. If I'm like, hey, I'm looking to go fast. I'm going to move. But. I'm still curious about the SC Elite because I again being able to mm. do an eight mile easy run right out the door on super hilly terrain and not be bothered at all. I'm like, you know, if I was just gonna go run one, yeah, I would choose the SC Elite. But if I was like, I'm going to race, it'd be Endorphin Elite. Cool, David. What about you? Alpha Fly, Alpha Fly. Yeah, it's Alpha Fly, Alpha Fly. He won't say it, but it'll happen like a couple minutes beforehand. Although we he, we have less of that because he actually now, ran now his Rocket marathon in it. Well, it's he ran it in X2 the two because now he's got his his Hoka like true Hoka super shoes. I'm just I'll stop. <laughs> I kind of like just sitting back and watching what you guys <laughs> think I'm going to say. Like Didn't this we is kind of earlier fun. that we were just like kind of like <laughs> troll you roast today. David the whole time. Yeah, I know. Like what what's up with this? I don't know. Um, <laughs> I feel like marathon we didn't roast you enough. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I feel like I don't get roasted enough, actually, so that's fair. Yeah. Um, marathon, I think it's a pretty definitive answer for me. I think I'm going Saucony Endorphin Elite. That's my favorite just, shoe for the marathon. Like You just did it. I just yeah, did, did it. it. I just ran yeah, a marathon yeah. in it. I've taken this thing 26.2. I felt fine afterwards. I mean, as, as fine as you could after a marathon, right? Like, 
Um, not on the ground, collapsing, crawling around, puking, needing a wheelchair, none of that. Uh, <laughs> finished, ate my Belgian waffle, drank a beer. Like everything was <laughs> picturesque and perfect as far as that goes. Um, Endorphin Elite uh, is my marathon choice. Now, where I have a hard time making this is that half marathon choice. Mm-hmm. For me, there are four shoes in the rotation. <laughs> It was three, apple but fly, it's apple but it's fly, four. Apple fly, apple but it's fly. four. It's really four. I mean, Alpha Fly one. I don't have it next to me. Um, that's kind of that's such a fun shoe. I don't know why. It's just like a shoe that works really well for me. And Alpha Fly two just didn't quite deliver the same way. Um, it just felt more, a little bit more marathon specific. And then I like the Endorphin Elite more. So then it kind of just ended up becoming Endorphin Elite, and Alpha Fly two is kind of just not really in any of my picks. Mm-hmm. So Alpha Fly 1 is kind of a half marathon pick, but I probably wouldn't run in it because my pair has a lot of miles on it, and I'm just not going to run an issue that has that many miles on it. So now looking at the ma- half marathon, it's like we're still turning over pretty good. We're running fast. It's a controlled effort, but I still need to be able to push this shoe, and the shoe needs to be able to respond. And so like... The Endorphin Elite's one of those shoes where, like, when I was really trying to turn over and push, I actually struggled with, like, running, like, a 10K to half marathon pace. Like, half marathon, I think I could still do, but I would not run in this thing in the 10K. And so, like, Endorphin Elite is still on the ballot. Like, it's still one of the choices where it's, like, this is, like, the shorter end of the range that I would want to run in this shoe in. The other one, Klein mentioned, the Rocket X2 actually responds really well like it's a Mm -hmm. shoe that works well for my mechanics i just ran on my like ninth mile of the tempo a four something you know in that shoe today and it felt fine so it's like one of those things where like i can respond and push into the ground and know i can trust it under my foot and with the half marathon type paces it's like okay i'm going fast enough to where like i still want to feel fast i'm not just like falling into a rhythm the other shoe is a shoe that makes me feel very fast. And it's like, can I actually hang on for that long? And that shoe is the Adidas Takumi Sen 9. I knew it. I knew it. That's a shoe. Like, this could be a very, very intriguing half marathon shoe. And it's one of those ones. I just haven't quite taken it that long. I've run, I mean, I've run 14 miles in one day in it, but I haven't run like 13 quality miles in it. You know, I don't know what it feels like nine miles into something where I'm running hard the whole time in that shoe. And I just haven't done that yet. But I could see it being a very, very intriguing option because it's one of those shoes that like when I want to respond and I put it into the ground and I'm like, please run faster. It runs faster and -hmm. it responds with me. So that's where I'm having a really hard time making that decision for the half marathon because the marathon, like this thing is light enough to where it doesn't feel like it's intriguing. Like it's not intruding me in any way. It's responsive enough to where I can push it, but it's, it's so it's comfortable enough to where I can just fall into rhythm. And so the endorphin elite for me for the marathon is an easy answer, but the other ones, it's like, it's like that weird middle ground of like, I just don't quite know at the moment. And I just need Mm -hmm. to have a little bit more time in all of these. I've got 26 miles in my Rocket X2, but that doesn't mean much considering one was a 16 and one was a 10. You know, it's right. like I've had two runs. And um, to give me sense, I've had several runs and I've had quite a few, but they're, they've all mostly been track workouts. So I haven't yeah. taken it on a long road workout yet. So that's where it gets really dicey on that choice for me. But if you see me in my half my next half marathon and I'm wearing the Takumi, don't be surprised because I think there's a chance I might actually choose that shoe. Yeah. And same goes for the Rocket X, too. I feel like if you're looking at odds right now, they're all even. It's like 33 percent chance on all of those. <laughs> like it's like an even answer. Like I don't I'm not leaning in any specific way. So those are my choices. I don't know. Like it's three and I'm not leaning in any specific direction. I could see all of them all being the right answer. It's like, yeah, I was going to try to make a parallel between that and current March Madness because there is not 
any one, two, or three seeds that made the Final Four this year, which is insane. That's just crazy to me. Yeah, but UConn is like, that's like the most unfair four seed on the planet. Like, Well, and even Miami being a five seed, they won the ACC, like, in the regular season, and then they... They lost in the semifinals. Of I had the them beating Houston like, in my bracket. I did. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, like I remember like this whole year being a college basketball fan. I'm like, they've never gone away. They've always been there, but no one ever talked about them. It was like a yeah. weird thing where like they've had a very, very good season. They've been very consistent. But and, the parody is great. Yeah. And, and my <laughs> niece, my niece, who is six, picked at Florida Atlantic to win the whole thing. So I'm my cheering goodness. them on. So please tell well, me that they entered into a, like an actual bracket thing. No, just our family bracket. No. We, we ex- we, but we exchange <laughs> a uh, we exchange one of my old gymnastics trophies, um, and you get to write your initials on it if you win a certain year. So, all right, leave it to a shoe review episode to get us all fired it up and passionate. So we are going to wrap things up. Thank you all for sticking with us. If you haven't already, please, it really helps us grow the podcast and and help it spread. If you uh, leave a review and if you subscribe um, to the podcast on whatever platform you listen to, um, that would really help us out. Otherwise, you can always follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, um, and others, and follow us on DocsRunning.com. Take care, everybody.